All right, yeah, so this is the unit. As you can see, there's no status light coming on whatsoever. I had it set to pilot after uh, it was set to off, now it's set to pilot, but there's no light. And when you hold it in and you push the ignition button, you don't get any ignition. There's like nothing happening. And even if you push and hold it, nothing's happening. So for whatever reason, things off. All right, I figured it out. So uh, basically, what I did was, uh, even though the status light wasn't on, I turned it to pilot, and I kept on clicking it, and then the status light came on. So it started beeping four times. Four times claims that it's a high temperature shutdown. So to clear the code, what I did was um, I turned it all the way up to very hot, and I waited 10 seconds. Then I turned it down to hot, and I waited 10 seconds. Then I turned it down to pilot. And I waited another 10 seconds and then I turned it back to hot. And as soon as I turned it to hot, it activated. So it looks like now it's on. Okay, so I'm making this video out of the normal because I just learned for myself how to turn a water boiler back on if you come and there's no fire and um, you also see that there's no status light blinking. So there's a, a couple of things that you should really know first, Diane. Um, so basically, this is a water boiler, obviously. This is a uh, Whirlpool water boiler, but what I've noticed is uh, some of the newer ones pretty much look exactly like this, like they have the exact same control unit. There's a couple of things you need to know. First of all, this thing is not wired to the house. So this uh, water boiler has no plugs or wires going to the circuit breaker or the fuse box of the house, right? The way this thing gets its electricity is there's a small switch right here, and this is called a thermal pile, right? Whoa, that thing's hot. And then on top of that, so this is called the thermal pile. So it's a switch right there. It has your white wire, it has your red wire. So your white wire and your red wire basically deliver the electric spark in order to ignite the gas. Now inside there, there's also what you may see is a little black button. If that pops out, that means that the unit has overheated. And if the unit overheats and that pops out, it's kind of like a fuse switch, so you have to push it back in to reset it. If you push that little black switch right there in and it pops back out and it keeps popping back out, then that might mean that you have a bigger problem, so you're gonna have to call a plumber. So, if you don't have a problem with that switch and that switch is still inwards as much as it can be, then what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna gonna come to this system right here. Like, you don't, if you don't see a fire down here, you're gonna to wanna to come to the actual control unit, right? Now the control unit has a delay on it and the delay is for about 10 minutes. And the reason why it's 10 minutes is to clear out any gas that may be around this thing or in the air. So first of all, the first thing you would do is you would turn this switch to the off position. After you turn it to the off position, you wait for 10 minutes. Now you could give yourself 11 minutes or 12 minutes, but the bottom line is you turn it to the off position, you wait for at least 10 minutes because this thing has a, a delay timer. Once you've waited that 10 minutes and you know that there's no gas, you don't smell any gas, then you turn this switch to pilot. Once you turn it to pilot, the switch allows you to actually push it in. When you push the switch in, this down here is the igniter. So what you're gonna have to do is hold the switch in while pushing the igniter. Now here's the thing, and this is what got me. It may not ignite on your first try. So what you're gonna have to do is you keep the switch set to pilot and when you push it in what it does is it allows a small amount of gas to come into it in order for that small amount of gas to go inside and then that small amount of gas will be ignited when you push the ignite button and the ignite button sends a small shock down that little black wire so basically this thing is able to generate its own small amount of electricity using what's called a thermal pile in order to ignite that flame. Now, here's the other problem. As I said, if the status light is not on, you're gonna have to keep holding this in and you're going to, let's say you wait about 15 seconds. Every time you push this button and hold it, you just keep it hold and then you keep pushing the uh, ignition switch. What you're gonna notice is inside this space, the gas will fill up and then there will be a small burst of flame. 
that's because you're trying to ignite it and you're igniting small amounts of gas until this thing will actually ignite and run self-sustained. Here's the problem though. Let's say that doesn't work. You may have to take a brush and you may have to go underneath there and you may have to make sure that the grate that's beneath there is clean. Now I've seen some people on some videos and they actually have a big pan around here to make sure that dust can't get under there. So what I may have to do later is I may have to come in here and sweep up this dust that's around the thing. So as long as your filter grate down there, cause there's a little filter that allows air to come up. As long as that's clear, and as long as there's no major malfunction with the boiler, that will allow you to push and hold this, fill it up with a little gas, then push the igniter. And if you keep trying to ignite it while holding this, you may be able to get the status light to come back on. Now, if the status light comes on, it's gonna have a code that it's gonna flash. The way it's supposed to be is if there's no pilot light, that means you can't ignite it. You'll have zero flashes, that means the light is off. If it's running normally, you'll only have one flash, just like you see right here, it only flashes one time. The problem I had was it came on and it started flashing the four flashes of death. And the four flashes of death means high temperature shutdown, right? So in order to clear that code, this is what you do. And this is like the end of the video. What you'll do, once you get this on to four flashes, that means that it's ready to ignite itself. What you'll do is you'll turn this dial all the way up to very hot. Then what you'll do is wait 10 seconds. You'll turn it from very hot down to hot. Then you'll wait another 10 seconds. Then you'll turn it from hot down to pilot. Try not to go to off. Make sure it only goes to pilot and doesn't go to off. Because if you go to off, you may reset this whole process. You may have to do this thing again. Then I put it on pilot and there was nothing happening. Then what I did, I turned it towards hot. And right as soon as I got to hot, the thing ignited itself and the code was clear. The Whatever the malfunction code was cleared. Then... Once it's ignited and it's running just like you see now, at that point, you can set it to whatever temperature setting you want to set it to. Now, what you'll notice is it says temperature setting is A, well, actually you see low, hot, A, B, C, and then you see very hot. Now, some genius, instead of just putting the temperature at A is 120 degrees, and then putting B is 130 degrees, and then putting C is 140 degrees, some genius decided that they were just gonna put A, B, and C, and then on the unit, it doesn't say what A equals, B equals, or C equals. I don't know what the genius's name who did that was, but had it been me who designed it, I would have put A is 120. Or I would have put, instead of B, I would have put 130. And instead of C, I would have put 140. You know, for people who don't recognize an alphabet equaling a number, especially if you don't give them a code on the goddamn machine. So that's basically all I had to say. So I'm, you know, this is the second time somebody had um, had a water boiler go out and they asked me to uh, turn it back on, you know, and I didn't want to have to call anybody. I want to have to call a plumber. And, um, just in case your water boiler goes out, which might happen, I don't know why, but it might happen. Again, make sure that you clean the bottom, make sure that you use like a brush just like this, a, fill, a brush, and you get under there and you just scrub it, make sure there's no dust blocking the intake, and then make sure you just follow the steps. It's very, it's kind of simple if you really think about it. You turn it to off first, you wait the 10 or 11 minutes, then you turn it to pilot, you push in while it's on pilot, and then you start clicking the igniter until you get that status light back on. Once the status light comes on, slide it all the way to very hot, come back to hot after 10 seconds, then come back to pilot after 10 seconds, and then wait a couple more seconds and then go back to hot. And you should, be able to get this thing on now this is the type of video that i ain't going to get a lot of views for initially but if you're having a problem uh getting this done you can actually put a comment there which will show up i'll be able to see the comment and i might be able to respond to the comments since i try to respond to comments as quickly as i can but uh yeah i was able to do this i'm very very impressed with myself 
and uh, there you go. So, you know, this, this is one of the things, like, when you're a homeowner or you're a landlord, it's like you got to know shit like this because something will always come up. Nobody knows how to handle it, and you're going to get called. And if you don't know how to do it, you're going to end up having to pay a plumber. And they, these people charge you like $80 and shit just to come and look at it. You don't want to deal with that. And because, uh, you know, that $80, I could spend that drinking. Like I could go buy some Japanese sake or some plum wine or something, or maybe one of those Bud Light Mango Ritas. There's no reason for me to waste $80 just having your ass look at this shit. And then you're going to do the exact same thing that I did. So there's no reason for that. So that's all I had to say. I uh, hope this video can help somebody.